Welcome. It's an honor to be here today to preside over and be a part of this formal repatriation, which has been a long time coming and is the fruition of the work of many here today. This Mayan urn will be returned to its rightful place in Chiapas, Mexico to the Museo de los Altos in San Cristobal, which is one of my favorite places in the world. It was just a little under 20 years ago today that I got off a plane in Tuxpan Gutierrez in Chiapas, Mexico, with six students in tow and spent the next 14 days in the Mantas Azules biosphere. That trip changed the way that I think about our role in universities and our role as educators. I went back every three months for a number of years. Each time, I and my students sat and listened carefully to the community members in the city, to the community members out in the more rural areas, and to the community members in Zapatista communities. Each time we asked a question, what is the purpose of education? And each time we returned back to the States thinking about the responsibilities we had to each other, the responsibilities we had to the greater world, the responsibilities we had to hold our higher education institution accountable. And that's part of the origin story 
of the values we've been talking about here at Albion for the last year. Purpose, belonging, and action. The purpose of higher education is to create a more equitable future. That's what I came away from those trips with. I could think of no more fitting activity today than to put that purpose into action. Action that is required to repair the damage done by earlier generations. And today that's what we do. We seek repair to return this beautiful urn to sit with its siblings as a representation of Mayan history, to return it in the spirit of belonging to the Museo de Altos. We'll hear in a moment from Dr. Palka and Dr. Losada, whose research led to this day. I want to thank them both for their hard work and for their insight and partnership in this process. I also want to thank the Consul for being here today and for working with us on this transition. Thank you for being here and for witnessing this very important day. Dr. Joel Palka is Associate Professor in the School of Human Evolution and Social Change at Arizona State University. Professor Palka has done research on the Maya region for over 30 years. He specializes in Maya art, ethnohistory, religion, settlements, and culture change following Spanish conquest. He has directed the Menzabac Archaeological Project for over 15 years in Chiapas, Mexico, examining culture contact, pilgrimage, conflict, and contemporary Lankandan Maya society. Dr. Palka has published books on Lankandan Maya culture, pilgrimage, and ritual landscape, along with numerous articles and books on Maya archaeology. He has visited Albion College over the last 20 years to do research and speak on the Marvin Van photograph and artifact collections. I first met Joel and learned about the Van collection and the Mayan urn that brings us all here this evening when he visited us to deliver the library's annual Schlag lecture in 2009. Subsequently, we worked together in 2016 to undertake the scientific analyses to confirm that the Albion urn was indeed authentic and should be sent home to where it belongs. Please join me in offering Joel a hearty Albion welcome. Thank you, Brad. Uh, good evening, everybody. I wanted to first uh, start with a, a funny, interesting story um, with, with this urn. And you can see up there on the wall, right, that there's more. <laughs> this is, uh, and I often give academic talks. I, I, I title this talk something like the tale of, of, well, usually two urns, the tale of two urns and then kind of colon surprises. Uh, because this story, it, it, the surprises did not stop. And, so it first started when um, I was a professor at the University of uh, Illinois in Chicago in, in anthropology and uh, doing research, as Brad was saying, on uh, culture contact and culture change. I'm interested in studying the impacts of the, uh, of the Spanish conquest on, on Maya who were living out in the middle of the rainforest because, yes, they were, they were impacted too by the conquest. And, so anyway, yeah, that's what I do my research on. And um, I was at UIC uh, for a couple of years when my colleague here at Albion College, Liz Brumfield, uh, who uh, 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 was an Aztec specialist. And, and Liz uh, calls me on the phone. Yes, we're using phone those days. No texting and we've gotten beyond writing each other letters. So she calls me and says, hey, there's something really interesting going on here. This is about 1998. 99, and she said, come, you, you have to come here because uh, there was an alum, Marvin Van, Van, who donated all of his photographs and some objects, some artifacts, uh, to the to Albion College, and you should come. I think there's some, some, some important materials here, she said, and especially the photographs. So 
So I showed up here uh, to look at all the photographs in, in Marvin Vance collections that he donated to, to Albion College. And as I'm walking through the library of the special collections, there was a, a glass case. And that's the image up there on, on the left. That's the, the Albion room. That's, that's, this guy's here. Yeah, the consul said today at dinner, yeah, we gotta give him names. And he's right. You gotta, instead of saying Albion urn or the San Cristobal urn, let's give him names. But, so anyway, this guy here, the Albion urn, is the one up there on the left. I walked in the library and I see the urn sitting there and I looked at it and I go, ah, oh, very interesting because that's contact period, meaning about probably 15th century, maybe 1500, maybe 1600, something like that. Um, it, 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 the facial features are just like the, the images and the incense burners that contemporary or, or historic Lacando Maya, the, the Maya who have lived and worked with in Chiapas. It looks kind of like their, their incense burners. So this is kind of like a proto Lacando incense burner. And then Liz and um, it was then Jenny, who was the, the, the special collections uh, managers, started showing me all the slides that Marvin Van had taken in Chiapas. And I immediately kind of diverted all my attention to those slides and spent, oh, I don't know, five, six, seven years coming to Albion from Chicago, uh, just working on the slides. And, and yeah, passing this guy here every time I come in, uh, and then think, yeah, someday I'll do work on that. I have a lot of uh, work on, on, on the slides. And then it was about 2012 when I came, I was still doing work on the images. And there's film too, Marvin Man has film, like uh, uh, old, almost like Super 8 film or something, even rolls and rolls of it. And looking at that and other things, uh, that was in March of like 2012. And then I went back to Chicago, got ready to go down to field work. Uh, and um, and then as I go down to field work to get the permits, I go into the, Nash, the, the regional museum in Chiapas, and I go and get my paperwork. It was an exchange of papers, as I like to say. Uh, I get the permits, and as I'm walking out, I see the, that there's the exhibit. It's the Salon Maya, or the Maya exhibit area. I, you know, I haven't been in the Salon Maya for a few years. I'm gonna go in and go, go check it out. And so I, I walked in the door, and turn the corner, and all of a sudden, then the image in the middle there, the, the other guy. <laughs> but I didn't know that. I thought, I was here talking to Brad. Uh, Brad Chase, who's just up here uh, introducing me, talking to Brad, and I said, yeah, we'd, we'd, it would be nice to have, to have the Albion repatriated to Jeffus. And I, and I went and saw, like, did Brad he work this out? Wow, great, great job, Brad, because it's sitting here in front of me. It's the exact twin, but I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know that this other, other urn even existed. But then I know my iconography very well, and I was looking at the one in the, in, in the center, just like right here, kind of studying it. I'm like, no, this is, it's too good. It's, you can't copy something like this exactly. I have a good memory, and so I knew that the, the, the designs and the, the size of the object, everything was, was the same. And I challenge you, look at the two images, um, the one on the left and in the middle, and you really can't tell the difference. If you look at it long enough, you can see the one in the middle has a little more yellow paint uh, around kind of the top. Let me find the pointer here. So there's a little bit of, of yellow paint in this area, whereas there's none in the Albion room. They painted all this, this black right here. So there's a little bit of paint that they didn't cover with black. Um, but that's about it. You get the measuring tape out, and, and there's differences of a couple of, of, of millimeters, really. I mean, these are exact copies. So what I want you to, to kind of take out of this today is this is really, really important. It's really significant that really any culture, anybody in the world would make an exact copy, or a twin, or even a clone. I don't know how many of these were made. If there are more than two, we gotta say clones, right? That they're cloning these. Um, so um, anyway, when I, when I left that, the museum that day, I thought we have to then, what we have to do is we have to, to take samples from the clay, from the bases of these. You can take um, a little flecks of clay or samples of clay and then submit them to chemical analysis and you can see if they were using the same clays. 
Because if it's, they're made out of the same clays, then they're both originals, right? They're made by one artist and in, and in Chiapas. And if the clays, uh, the matrices and that are in the clay signatures are so different, then you know one is a, probably a copy. But again, I don't know who, who could have done that. So I knew, that even before you did the chemical analysis, I knew that they, they were made in the same place with twins, but you still have to have to prove it. Uh, anyway, we took the samples from the urn years, uh, Brad Chase and I, and some students, or two Albion students and two UIC students, and uh, we got the clay samples from the Albion urn there on the left, and then uh, I went to San Cristobal de las Casas with uh, Josue, my colleague Josue Lozada, who you'll be hearing from in a second, and Josue and I and some students then took some, some samples from the, the urn that was in San Cristobal. And as it turns out, uh, on their two separate independent chemical analyses, it came back they're from the same place. So we've scientifically proven they're from, from the same place, you know, from this, this Lake Petah that Josue uh, will be talking about. This third one I knew about before any of these two. Uh, this third one here is, uh, is this just called her the moon goddess. It's, uh, uh, it's a female uh, de de depicted God on, the, on that urn, and, and so she was published years ago, and in reading through things I saw her, and I thought, oh, we need, uh, it's a moon goddess, um, but we haven't done any studies of the clay um, on that urn yet, but when she makes it back to Chiapas and San Cristobal, then we'll, we'll do the, a similar kind of chemical study. So that's, it's really important. Now another thing is, is it's possible that another thing I want you to take away from this today is often in ancient Maya kingdoms or settlements or polities, there are a triad of patron deities, of deities who protect the community, who look after the community, and who communicate with the elite Maya. That's often why these urns have human-like characteristics. There's this whole sway was talking about today earlier really, that there's, they're almost like persons, they have personalities and you can communicate with them, give them food in their mouths, that kind of thing. So the, the, these gods would communicate and give information to, uh, to Maya kings or uh, leaders of Maya lineages and the like, but there's, there's often three. So it's possible that these are the three patron gods of a Maya settlement or of a political organization or polity at about the time of the Spanish conquest at, at Lake Pata. So the, then the interesting thing of what, what is depicted here, I'll just talk about this briefly because it's in other ways kind of surprises, it's very interesting. These, these three urns were found in caves. We're not sure the exact kind of caves or provenience of them yet, but at least one, the Albion one, was from a cliff in a recess on a cliff, uh, at the base of a cliff. And what's really neat about that is, is that's what that urn is showing. If you look at the designs, you'll see that there is a god a hu with human attributes coming out of a dark recess. And he's the, the dark god, he's an underworld god or an earth god. And he's coming out of a cave. So uh, there's the limestone cliff, limestone colored, uh, stone behind them, there's the dark recess of the cave, and this god is coming out of it. Now this cave is on a cliff or a mountain, and this is the symbol for wheats, or mountain, or hollow mountain. So it's depicting the exact, I have a picture, a tall cliff, a little cave recess at the edge of this, this beautiful lake in, in Chiapas. And so Maya put these in the same cave, I don't know, or cliff, or separate ones, we don't know yet, and they would go in and they would communicate. So they're going to the house of this patron god, aren't they? They're going to the cliff in the cave, and they're communicating with this patron god, giving it offerings, and, uh, and then going back to, their, um, back to their settlements. Now this third one here is a moon goddess, because she's wearing a jade skirt. Uh, that jade, that's a jade mosaic skirt that moon goddesses wear or maize gods wear. Maize plants, as we're all from, most of us from the Midwest anyway, or we live in the Midwest here, we know that maize plants have male and female features. 
And so the, the maze god also has the lunar goddess features on it. They both wear that, that jade skirts. Uh, this is a woman, somebody at some point, when they took her out of the cave, they, they, her breasts broke off or they broke them off. But there's the circle scars of where she had, had, had breasts. Uh, and so, and they're also, they have these tobacco leaves uh, coming out of, their, uh, out of their ears. And there's this connection with maize and all foliage growing. So what's probably happening is she was in a cave and Maya people went in to also communicate with her, provide her with, with offerings in order to get rain and maize and, and, and that kind of thing. So that's what, what I largely think, or what we largely think is going on with the kind of the iconography or the designs of these and then their original setting uh, where they're originally found. And Josue and I are, are still going to this, to this community, these communities, and we want to talk to people more some of the older people that were with Marvin Van in the 60s, 1960s, and see if, if they have any, any, any information on these, uh, on these urns. So, so anyway, that was kind of a long story, still make long, but uh, <laughs> that's uh, the history of the research uh, on, on, on these urns. And I am so glad that this day came. I've always kind of pictured this day in my head that, that yes, that it would happen that Albion would help to repatriate this urn, to, to, to send it back home to, to Chiapas, and it even gets better now is another surprise to me, a very good one, that uh, be with its brother, be with his sister. So this is a, it's a very, very, very important time, very, very neat occasion. So, so thank you very much. to introduce Dr. Josue Lozada. He is an archaeologist and specialist in Maya cultures. Josue earned his doctorate in archaeology at La Escuela Nacional de Antropología y Historia in Mexico City. He also holds a master's degree in natural resource sciences and world development from Colegio de la Frontera Sur in San Cristobal de las Casas, Chiapas. Jose has held many prestigious positions over the years. He was cultural heritage director uh, for the Council of Culture in the state of Chiapas. In 2017, he was director of the Humanities Faculty at the University of Arts and Sciences in Chiapas. And currently, he is a professor at the National Institute of Anthropology and History in Mexico City. In addition to being professor, he is also the director of the Rock Art Registry at Lakes Menzala Campeta in Ocosingo, Chiapas. Jose's current research focuses on rock art in the Buenampak and the Menzala archaeological regions. His analysis of rock art, pottery, and lithics has led to numerous presentations in Mexico, Peru, Spain, and the United States, as well as many important scientific articles. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jose Lozada. Thank you for the introduction. Um, uh, I have to read some, some words. Um, hello, everyone. It is a great pleasure to be part of this uh, important repatriation ceremony. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Matthew Johnson, uh, president of Albion College, and his entire team, who have been following this process, especially Elizabeth Palmer, uh, who has been in close and fruitful communication with me in planning my visit to this beautiful college. Uh, I would also like to thank the Consul General of the Detroit region, Fernando Gonzalez Saife, with whom I have been in contact to discuss the logistics involved in returning the Maya ceramic cylinder to Mexico. Um, I also want to thank Dr. Joel Paca, with who I have had many experience in the field, living and learning with the Lacandon Maya Indians within the Lacandon jungle, in the northern part of the state of Chiapas in southern Mexico, and with who I have worked and researched the iconography of the Maya urn 
as well as studying its chemical components. Also, I bring a cordial greeting to everyone to, at this ceremony on behalf of the General Director of the National Institute of Anthropology and History, anthropologist Diego Prieto, uh, who has given close attention to this world process uh, and has facilitated the best conditions for returning the cylinder intact to Mexico City. Um, the, I first visited the Petja Lake in 2015 in the municipality of Ocosingo, Chiapas, the location where the Maya Orm was found. Together with a researcher friend, um, we depart from Menzabak Lake not knowing what we will find. In satellite images we had, we could see a small Celtal Maya community called Cibal, but we, we didn't know if there was a road to get to Petja Lake. To guide us, uh, we also had an old map bay made in 1905 by Theobar Mahler. This explorer of Italian origin and German parents traveled through various parts of the Maya area, including the states of Tabasco, Chiapas, and Yucatan. During his travels, he wrote important descriptions of the archaeological monuments at Uxmal, Chichen Itza, Palenque, and Petja Lake, the later two sites in the state of Chiapas. When we arrived at Petha Lake, we found a true paradise in the middle of the jungle. Before me was a large lake with artificial islands in the middle of it. That is, islands made or built in pre-Hispanic times by ancient Maya. In addition, I was able to visit the interior of several caves where we came upon human remains, Lacandon in science borders and cliffs with rock art that show evidence of a strong ritual activity. Uh, the first exploration in Petha Lake was carried out by October Mahler in 1898, who described the rock art on the cliffs and mentioned that there was a community of Lacandon Maya living south of this lake. Later, in the 60s, other researchers arrived, such as Swiss photographer Gertrudis Duby, wife of the Danish explorer Franz Blom, who made photographic records of Lacandon ceremonies in the caves of Petha Lake. Her photographic material can be viewed today in the Navajo Museum in the city of San Cristobal de las Casas in Chiapas. Years later, in 1969, Professor Marvin Van arrived at Petha Lake with Tom Fisher and visited the ruins of Kanakash a very interesting late classic archaeological site with mural paintings. Marvin Van made a map of the site and took several photographs of the people, the ruins, and even undertook aerial photography of the location. Another of Marvin Van's important contribution is the underwater telescope he built to observe the pre-Hispanic roads that connect one island to another in Petha Lake. He also conducted a number of scuba dives doing pioneering work in underwater archaeology, even though the murkiness of the water and the presence of alligators made his research very risky. Um, finally, Marvin Banks' signing in, uh, of the Maya ceramic cylinder was very special, since it was found in situ in a cave, and interestingly, its colors are still very well preserved. The Petha, uh, the Petha Lake Maya ceramic cylinder is important because of its iconography and also uh, because it has a twin cylinder from the Lake Petha that is currently located in the Los Altos Museum in the beautiful colonial town of San Cristobal de las Casas in Chiapas. In fact, a third cylinder of the Moon Goddess, which was also struck from the same lake, is now displayed at the Maya Museum of Cancun in Mexico. It is our hope that this trio of cylinders, which may be the three patron gods of conquest era Maya at the lake, will soon be reunited as one family in San Cristobal. Um, thanks to the devolution that brings us together here today, we reinforce the cultural ties in the field of cultural heritage between Mexico and the United States. Uh, two nations full of history and culture with a shared interest 
in the protection of our archaeological heritage. The National Institute of Anthropology and History is deeply grateful to Albion College for this excellent gesture of cultural collaboration and we hope to continue straining the relationship and the link between professors and students of our two institutions. Thank you all very much for being here and for your attention too. Me da mucho gusto estar con ustedes, aunque sea desde la distancia, en esta ceremonia en la que se concreta la repatriación de una interesante urna maya, más bien un cilindro portaincensario que sabemos procede de la laguna Petá, en la selva La Cantona de Chiapas. Para la Secretaría de Cultura y para el Gobierno de México es muy importante que podamos asistir a estos gestos de generosidad, a estos gestos de fraternidad entre las distintas naciones y pueblos del Orbe y que tienen presente la necesidad que tenemos las naciones diversas del mundo de recuperar nuestro patrimonio, nuestra memoria, nuestros bienes culturales. Ahora se trata de un objeto que evidentemente nos vincula con la historia de un gran tronco civilizatorio que fue la cultura maya antigua, cultura que sigue presente ahora en los diversos pueblos y comunidades mayas que viven en el sur de México, en el sureste y en Centroamérica. Eh, sabemos que este cilindro salió de México después de una serie de investigaciones a cargo del profesor Marvin Ball. Él, en ese entonces, no había una regulación clara con respecto a la salida de piezas procedentes de la investigación arqueológica. Él la lleva a Michigan para continuar con sus investigaciones, de manera que una vez que fallece el profesor Marvin Bani, profesor que se interesó evidentemente de manera muy notable por recuperar la memoria de los pueblos del México antiguo y particularmente de las culturas mayas, entonces una vez que fallece el profesor Bani, la familia se pone en contacto con la Universidad de Albion College en Michigan para que la pieza pudiese ser devuelta a nuestro país. De manera que agradecemos muchísimo a la Universidad Albion College en Michigan que haya sido el intermediario para poder eh, lograr la recuperación de esta pieza y saludamos de manera muy afectuosa al doctor Matthew Johnson, rector de la Universidad por este gesto de cordialidad con nuestro país. Saludamos también al cónsul de México en Detroit y en Michigan, Fernando González Saife. Quisiera también saludar al profesor Joel Palca, profesor de la Universidad Estatal de Arizona, que junto con nuestro colega Josué Lozada Toledo han investigado esta y otras piezas procedentes de la misma región cultural. Se trata, como les decía, entonces, de una pieza que tiene que ver con el periodo que los arqueólogos han denominado posclásico, es decir, el que puede establecerse desde el siglo XIII hasta el siglo XVI de nuestra era, inclusive en el que florece claramente en el centro de México la cultura, el poderío mexica y en el que en el caso del 
sureste, en el caso de Yucatán y del área maya, se mantienen desarrollos locales muy poderosos, muy potentes, que dan lugar a expresiones vinculadas, por supuesto, también con las culturas oaxaqueñas y con las culturas del centro de México. Eh, es interesante hacer notar y ya Josué nos hará los planteamientos correspondientes. Agradezco mucho el activismo de Josué para poder eh, lograr que se concretara esta recuperación. Él nos está planteando eh, una tarea interesante desde el punto de vista académico y desde el punto de vista arqueológico, que es recuperar el vínculo de esta pieza con la que tenemos en el Museo Cultural de los Altos de Chiapas, eh, que son prácticamente gemelas, es decir, hay una semejanza formal enorme, y también poder recuperar eh, el vínculo que existe con otra pieza que seguramente data de la misma región, pero que se ubica ahora en el Museo Maya de Cancún, y que si bien tiene algunas diferencias formales desde el punto de vista estilístico es muy semejante. Valdría la pena entonces, eh, como ha propuesto Josué, que se encuentren estas piezas y que finalmente las dos, que son piezas gemelas, eh, convivan en el mismo museo, seguramente en el estado de Chiapas. Nuevamente, un saludo a todas y todos ustedes, muy reconocido por este gesto de recuperación del patrimonio mexicano. Enhorabuena. Good afternoon, everybody. Buenas tardes. Dr. Matthew Johnson, President of Albion College. Desde la distancia, Dr. Prieto, General Direct, Director of the General uh, of the National Institute of Anthropology and History in Mexico. S uh, friends, students, attending in person and virtually this event. I, I couldn't be happier today. I have ju just signed with President uh, Johnson the deed of transfer of the Mayan urn, or as uh, we call it now, the Albion urn, <laughs> that on behalf of the government of Mexico and Albion College, we have agreed to its repatriation so it can return to its home in the state of Chiapas in Mexico. As we have learned uh, from Dr. Balca and Joshua Lozada, our Mayan urn that we are witnessing here and appreciating right now has an incalculable historical value uh, coming from the archaeological site of Laguna Peta in Chiapas. And in talking with uh, 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 our historians, our friends today, Dr. Palca and Lozada, and learning a little bit more about the history of the urn and how it traveled from a soul tree 
humid and hot weather in Mexico to the US, to the cold winters in Michigan, to apply to stay in a private liberal arts college in Michigan, and going back to Mexico perhaps with a diploma, to reunite with its uh, 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 twin sister in Chiapas, I couldn't stop thinking that maybe Dr. Balka and, and Dr. Joshua want to write a novel on the earth that could even maybe someday uh, become a movie in the future. <laughs> Just imagine all the episodes that our beloved uh, urn has witnessed in the thousands of years of existence, all the things it has witnessed. So thanks again to Albion College for your hospitality, for organizing this beautiful ceremony, and further, furthermore for taking such good care of the Mayor Mayor for so many, many years. Thank you, Dr. Beth Chase, Dr. Megan Farley, Ms. Elizabeth Palmer. Uh, we've been in this talks, in my case, uh, for the last two years. We're gonna call it from the pre-COVID era. You've been extremely helpful and accommodating. Thank you again from distance to Dr. Prieto, Director of the INA, to the Mexican Foreign Ministry, our legal department, Consultoria Jurídica. Thank you to Cecilia Fragoso here, Head of our Cultural Affairs, uh, at the Consulate uh, of Mexico in Michigan. And finally, dear friends, I just want to underline that this is just more than a symbolic act. It's a result of great importance to international cultural cooperation. The Mayan urn has a value that is intrinsically linked to its people, to its history, and whose restitution is of the utmost importance for our cultural capital, our understanding and our appreciation of our past and development. Today that is relevant to the Mayan culture, to the archaeology of Chiapas in Mexico, and to the general public, contributing also in sending a very strong message to other regions of the world, museums, countries, on the importance of the restitution of the cultural property to their places of origin. By means of this repatriation, also, the cultural ties and friendship in matters of cultural heritage between Mexico and the US are being reinforced. The recovery of the Mayan peace and the reunification with its twin peace that we've learned a lot here today as well, represents an act of great importance for Mexico to its cultural heritage and confirms its, its commitment to the recovery of tangible uh, assets of its cultural heritage, with, uh, which is the standard of the current uh, government in Mexico. Dear friends, as, as uh, President Johnson was stating in his, in his initial message, I hope that some of you, some of us, will be able to reunite soon in San Cristobal to witness together the arrival of the urn. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Albion College. Muchas gracias, Presidente Johnson. Y finalmente, en español, quisiera eh, eh, dejar eh, constancia que la urna maya tiene un valor ligado a la historia y al contexto de sus pueblos de origen, cuya restitución es importante para su capital cultural y nuestro entendimiento y valorización de su pasado y desarrollo. Este acto contribuye entonces a mandar un fuerte mensaje, un sólido mensaje sobre la importancia de la restitución de los bienes culturales a sus lugares de origen. Gracias. Thank you very much.